Hello and welcome to HIVRNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. Today we're tackling one of the biggest quests in modern medicine, the race to actually cure HIV. It's a huge one. Yeah, a mission that's you know seeing incredible progress, but also some really persistent challenges. We should probably start back in, what, 1981, when things looked incredibly bleak. But then, 1987, that was a turning point, right? Absolutely. That was AZT, the first effective antiretroviral. It wasn't a cure, not by a long shot, but it was the first real weapon we had. And fast forward to today. Hmm. It's a different world. Completely different. I mean, HIV is not a death sentence anymore for most people who have access to treatment. We have combination antiretroviral therapy, RT. People live long, healthy lives. And maybe the biggest thing from a public health view, if someone's on RT and their viral load is undetectable, they absolutely cannot transmit HIV sexually. Undetectable equals untransmittable. Yeah, Every yeah. You, yeah. That's just monumental. A game changer for stigma, for prevention, everything. But here's the core question for this deep dive for you listening. If RT is so good, why are we still talking about a cure? Why hasn't it been solved? Where's the virus hiding? Ah, hiding is exactly the right word. And that brings us straight to the biggest hurdle, the latent reservoir. Okay, the latent reservoir, break that down for us. So when HIV infects certain immune cells, it does something really sneaky. It weaves its own genetic code, its blueprint, right into the DNA of that human cell. Into our own DNA. Exactly. We call that integrated blueprint proviral DNA. Now, RT is fantastic at stopping the virus from making poppies of itself out in the bloodstream. That's the viral load we measure. But RT can't touch that proviral DNA tucked away inside the cell's own command center. The virus basically goes into stealth mode, becomes latent or dormant inside these very long-lived immune cells. So sleeping. Sleeping, exactly. Hiding from art, hiding from the immune system. And if someone stops taking their RD, these reservoirs wake up start churning out new virus, and the infection comes roaring back. Okay, so RT gets the viral load down, maybe to undetectable in the blood. Correct. But it doesn't touch the proviral DNA, the blueprint hidden in the cells. That's a critical difference. That's the crux of it. So if that's hurdle number one, this hidden reservoir, what else makes this so difficult? Well, HIV doesn't exactly play fair. Hurdle number two is its rapid mutation. Ah, the shapeshifter problem. Precisely. HIV is incredibly sloppy when it copies itself. It makes mistakes constantly. So its genetic code changes, its surface structure changes, it <laughs> mutates fast. This means it's always a moving target. Developing a vaccine that works against all strains or a single cure that hits all variants, it's really, really tough because the virus just evolves to escape. Like trying to hit a target that keeps changing shape and location. You got it. An engineering nightmare, as you said. And then there's the sheer number of these hidden cells we need to deal with. Yeah, that's hurdle three, the total elimination requirement. To get a true sterilizing cure, you'd need to get rid of or permanently silence every single cell containing that latent proviral DNA. Every single one. Every single one. We could be talking hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of cells scattered throughout the body, lymph nodes, gut, brain. Wow. Finding and eliminating every last one without collateral damage. That's... Well, it's practically impossible with the technology we have right now. Which leads right into the safety issue, I imagine. Absolutely. Hurdle four, safety, side effects, and specificity. Whatever we do to target these cells, maybe trying to cut out that proviral DNA, it has to be incredibly specific. We can't harm healthy cells. We can't cause massive toxicity. I mean, people live long lives on RT. Any cure has to be safer or at least offer a massive advantage over lifelong treatment. It's a really high bar. Okay, so the latent reservoir, the proviral DNA, is definitely the main villain here. But let's talk about what is working brilliantly right now before we get into the futuristic stuff. Right, RT. It's the foundation. It controls the virus, lets the immune system rebuild, gets people to Wii U. Life-saving, life-changing. But again, stop the RT. <laughs> and then the reservoirs wake up, yeah. virus comes back. Got it. So a lot of the current innovation isn't just about finding a cure, but making today's treatment better, easier to stick with. Exactly. Adherence is key. Daily pills can be tough for lots of reasons. Privacy, schedules, access, any missed doses give the virus a chance. So what's new there? Well, long-acting RT is a huge deal. 
<laughs> we now have combinations like Cabot de Gravier plus Rulpivirine given as injections. Injections instead of pills. Yeah, maybe once a month or even every two months. And studies show they work just as well as daily pills. That's transformative for adherence and quality of life. That sounds like a massive improvement. And this long-acting idea, it's crossed over into prevention too, right? Pre-P? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Pre-exposure -pre -pre prophylaxis medication for HIV-negative people at high risk. It's been a cornerstone of prevention. Daily oral pre-P has been around, but the sources mention something really eye-opening. You mean lenacapavir? Yes. Lenacapavir. An injectable pre-AP. But get this, injections only every six months. Yeah, it's incredible. Trials showed almost 100% effectiveness. Science named it the 2024 breakthrough of the year. Six months between shots for prevention. That's revolutionary. It really is. These tools, RT and Advanced Pre-P, they manage the present incredibly well and buy us crucial time while the cure research pushes forward. Okay, so let's pivot to that cure research. What are the big goals? Broadly, there are two main goals. The ultimate prize is a sterilizing cure, completely eradicating every trace of the virus, including the proviral DNA, gone forever. But maybe more achievable in the nearer term is a functional cure. This means getting the virus into such deep remission, maybe locking it down so tightly that someone can stop RT indefinitely without the virus rebounding. Yeah. They'd still technically have the proviral DNA, but it wouldn't cause harm. Permanent remission, essentially. No daily pills needed. Exactly. And both of those require tackling that latent reservoir we keep talking about. How are researchers trying to do that? I saw two main strategies mentioned, shock and kill. Right. Shock and kill is one approach. The idea is to use special drugs, latency reversing agents, to shock the dormant virus awake. Force that proviral DNA to start making viral proteins again. Make it visible again. Make it visible, exactly. So then, the hope is, either the person's own immune system or other targeted therapies can recognize those newly active cells and kill them. Okay, wake it up, then take it out. What's the alternative? The alternative is kind of the opposite, block and lock. Instead of waking the virus up, the goal here is to push that latent proviral DNA into an even deeper, permanent state of sleep. Lock it down so it never wakes up. Precisely. Reinforce the locks on its genetic prison so even if art is stopped, it stays dormant, biologically inert, forever. Interesting. Two totally different ways to try and neutralize the reservoir. Yep. Attack or contain. Now, when you talk about getting into the cell's DNA, maybe cutting things out or locking them down permanently, that sounds like gene editing. You're spot on. That's where some of the most exciting futuristic work is happening. We're talking CRISPR-Cas9. The genetic scissors. Basically, yeah. Molecular scissors. There's a therapy in trials called EBT-101. It uses CRISPR-Cas9 specifically designed to find the HIV proviral DNA integrated into the human cell's genome and snip it out. Literally delete the virus's code from our own cells. That's the goal. Not just stopping it from replicating, but actually editing it out of the instruction manual, permanently removing the source. Wow. And that EBT-101, that's moving forward. It is. It got fast-track designation from the FDA in 2023, which means they see its potential and want to expedite its development and review. It's a big signal. And there are other cell therapies, too, like one called AGT-103T. Early data there showing some promising signs, like actual reductions in the amount of intact proviral DNA in people. It's early days, but encouraging. Okay, CRISPR is incredibly targeted. But what about harnessing the immune system itself? Didn't we say HIV mutates too fast for typical immune responses like antibodies? That's usually true, yes, yeah. but scientists have found special antibodies called broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs. Broadly neutralizing, meaning they work against many strains. Exactly. Unlike typical antibodies that might only recognize one specific version of the virus's outer coat, these BNABs target parts of the virus that are stable, conserved regions that the virus can't easily change because they're essential for its survival. Nah, hitting it where it can't afford to mutate. Precisely. And they're testing these BNABs now. Some trials involve people stopping their RT and getting infusions of BNAB combinations instead. And does it work? For some people, yes. They maintain viral suppression just with the BNABs. The results are a bit inconsistent so far. It doesn't work for everyone. But it shows that an immunotherapy approach could lead to a functional cure. And this is where the COVID vaccine tech comes in. mRNA. You got it. The success of mRNA vaccines gave researchers powerful new tools. They are now exploring mRNA approaches to try and teach the body to make its own potent BNABs reliably. Instead of just infusing them? Right. Or using mRNA to fine-tune other parts of the immune system to better hunt down and clear out those latently infected cells that RT misses. Immune modulation is a really hot area. 
it feels like there's genuine momentum building. The source has pointed to some really specific recent advancements. There absolutely is. Like new mRNA methods to actually help with that shock and kill strategy, forcing the dormant virus out of hiding more effectively. Yes, making the shock part more reliable. And that AGT-103T trial you mentioned, showing actual reductions in proviral DNA that feels like hitting the reservoir directly. It's early data, but yes, very significant if it holds up. Plus, the NIH putting serious money down $8.4 million, aiming for a broadly applicable cure within potentially five years, that's ambitious. It's incredibly ambitious, and that funding signals real belief in the current strategies. But we do need that dose of caution, too. Okay, temper the excitement. Why? Well, those reservoirs are stubborn. They're yeah. diverse, and they hide really deep in tissues, the brain, the gut, lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Getting therapies, especially complex ones like gene editing tools, delivered safely and effectively to all those places. That's a massive challenge. The delivery problem. Big time. And then there's the issue of viral escape, even from these advanced therapies. Plus, the sheer scale. If we find something that works in a small trial, how do we make it safe, affordable, and accessible to the millions globally who need it? That's a whole other mountain to climb. Right. A cure isn't really a cure until everyone who needs it can get it. Exactly. So pulling this all together, yeah. what's the realistic timeline for you, the listener? When might we see a cure? A guaranteed, works for everyone, sterilizing cure. That's likely still years away, maybe a decade or more. The science is complex. The hurdles are high. What? But achieving that functional cure, durable remission off RT, that might be closer. Maybe within the next five to 10 years for some approaches for some people. The progress with BNABs with some of the latency strategies, it feels more tangible. So maybe not total eradication soon, but okay. freedom from daily pills is potentially on the horizon. That seems like a more realistic near-term goal, yes. And throughout this whole journey, from basic art monitoring to these cutting-edge cure trials, the lab is crucial, isn't it? Absolutely critical. Standard tests track viral load and CD4 counts for managing HIV with RT. But in cure research, it's way more intensive. They're doing frequent viral load checks, detailed immune assessments, and crucially, these specialized research tests like proviral DNA assays, those are the tests that actually try to measure the size of that hidden reservoir. That's how they know if the shock and killer block and lock is actually working on the hidden virus, not just the stuff in the blood. Precisely. It's the readout for whether the cure strategy is hitting its target. Okay, that difference viral load versus proviral DNA feels like the key takeaway here. So, final advice for listeners based on all this. If you're living with HIV, step one is clear. Stick to your archer religiously. It's life-saving, and it achieves UDU. Cannot emphasize that enough. And stay informed. Keep an eye on clinical trial news. Maybe talk to your doctor about them, things like EBT-101, the BNAP combos. And if you're looking at prevention, definitely explore the pre-EP options, especially those incredible long-acting ones like lenacapavir. Six months is a game-changer. Absolutely. The big picture is... We've moved from managing a crisis to strategically targeting elimination. Today's treatments are phenomenal. And the new strategies, gene editing, advanced immunotherapies, long-acting prevention, they show we're really starting to figure out how to outsmart this incredibly tricky virus. We are genuinely closer than ever. And here's something to really chew on as we wrap up. Yeah. The research is getting so granular, they're learning that tiny, subtle differences in the virus's own integrated DNA might actually control how quickly or slowly that latent HIV wakes up. Yeah, the triggers for latency reversal. Exactly. So the next massive leap might not just be about killing the active virus or even locking it down, but about truly understanding and maybe even manipulating those precise molecular triggers that control latency itself. Yeah. Figuring out how to install a permanent off switch based on the virus's own mechanisms. It's a whole other level of complexity, isn't it? It really is. Outsmarting the virus at its most fundamental level. That's the ultimate goal. 